What's up, everybody? John Eric Pola here with My MMA News, and I'm excited to welcome this next guest that we have. He is Mikey Gonzalez, and he's going to be fighting next Tuesday on the Dana White Contender Series against Euros Menek, and uh, of course, a lot on the line in this fight because Dana White will be giving out UFC contracts. So let's welcome Mikey in here. Mikey, we, we really appreciate the time here. Uh, so let's just dive right into everything. Um, so for you, what's it like to have this opportunity to go out there and uh, and, and fight in front of Dana White and be on the big show with uh, the UFC? Yeah, the opportunity is amazing, man. I'm, I'm grateful and blessed. Very thankful for the opportunity that I got. I got it on 10 days notice, so short notice, but you don't turn down an opportunity like that, you know. Um, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm just, I hope to shine under those lights and showcase what my fan base already knows I do. And uh, yeah, man, I just hope to capitalize on this opportunity. But what, definitely grateful. And what's that like for you then to have to take a fight on short notice? Is this something that you've ever done before or is this a brand new territory for you? Yeah, I've done it a few times. It's not it's uh it's not the best scenario, but hey man, you know if you don't take a risk, you know, you're not gonna you know, we should always be ready, you know. It's like somebody's, you know, it, we can get into fights at any moment of, of our life. So I feel like, of course, these guys are professional, but I feel like we should always be ready. You know, it's not under the best circumstances because of COVID, but hey, it is what it is. And we're going to make it work, you know? Yeah. And, you know, and speaking along that, the uh, COVID things, too, what's it like for you guys? I know the UFC for their fighters has a lot of things uh, already in place as far as procedures go. Are you guys following under what we've seen in the past for UFC fighters? Or is there a whole different process for the contender series, guys? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, the UFC is going about it as professional as they can. I think that's why they're the only one of the only sports that's still active during this, this uh, epidemic and, and stuff. But Right now, I'm, I've been here in this hotel since Sunday, and they COVID tested me, my corner, my brother, and then we came back negative, so we're good. And but we're isolated here, like we cannot go anywhere. There's security guards all out the building. They got the the medical tents that test our temperature and things like that daily. So they're doing about it, and they're being proactive, and that's why I think that they're still running. You know, so it's. It's pretty crazy. Cabin fever, you know, stuck into this hotel. Yeah, man, I could imagine on that one. I, I can't stand being stuck anywhere. I'm so glad that the world is at least, it's not returned back to normal, but just that we could actually go out to eat places and go to bars and just not have to be stuck in our houses the whole time. So I'm with you on that one there. So now let's get uh, into this fight, you know, just a little bit here. What, what's it like for you, a guy in your opportunity to be here? Do you feel any extra pressure maybe that you're fighting in front of Dana White, that you're fighting for a UFC contract? Obviously, we know that every fight that any fighter ever goes into, there's going to be pressure going in there with the guy that wants to take your head off. Uh, you know, everything's obviously yeah. kill or be killed. Is there any extra pressure, though, given that there's a UFC contract on the line with the win? I think so, you know, but I mean... I'll only know that after I've took some time to kind of collect my thoughts after this is all over, you know, maybe, maybe a week from next Tuesday, I'll be able to over that week, collect my thoughts and actually kind of, you know, really realize what I'm thinking and how I feel. But as of right now, it's, it's hard to say, you know, I'm more of like, uh, we'll just take it as we go. And then, you know, I'll sit back and think about the whole process after. Yeah, man, I hear you there. And, and let's talk about you a little bit, too. This is a big opportunity for you to showcase your skills to the world. So what could everyone that tunes into the Dana White Contender Series expect to see out of you when you fight next Tuesday? Uh, I'm very creative. I'm very dynamic. I'm intelligent. Um, I think one site this week said that I'm methodical in my approach. I thought that was cool. Um, but, you know... I'm just blessed, man. Like there's certain individuals out in the world that are just, I think, special, you know. And I, I doesn't make you better than anybody, but I definitely feel like God's in my corner, um, and I shine under those lights. So I just hope that, you know, God willing, I shine under those lights like I always do, you know. But I definitely am entertaining everybody who's gone to see me fight. You know, I'm a fight to watch, so I definitely know I bring that to the table. Awesome. We're looking forward to seeing you out there and showcasing those skills. And, and you know, I want to ask you too, a little bit of a, a background, you know, information. I know you train out of California, but what, uh, what, you know, what gym do you train out of and how has your gym, you know, helped you along your uh, MMA career so far? 
Yeah, so the gym I train out of is uh, Kyle Terra Academy and Tactica. Um, and then I do a lot of my uh, training with my, my family, my brother and my dad. A lot a lot with my little brother. Um, pretty, like, pretty much like the, the new school DS brothers, man. <laughs> so what- but yeah, you know, just those are those are my camps and you know just been grinding with them for for years and shout out to all my uh cta comp team training partners like if it wasn't for them you know you know i wouldn't be half as skilled as i am so you know very, very grateful and thankful for uh Kyle Terra, flavio you know all my boys on the comp team out there and uh, my little brother and my pops and my family you know, my family is a big part of my team. The Mikey Rose team is is my family. You know, so yeah, I wanted to ask, what's that like when you train with your family? Like, do you ever? Because uh, I know we, all of us, tend to obviously we can take out our anger and that on our family. But here it is now. You're in a sport where you know you're working with your family in order to get better. At, you know, is there any type of things where you, there's ever a clash of heads with the family where you get so mad, or is everything you know kind of just like as any other gym that you guys love each other at the end of the day, no matter what you know, no matter what the circumstances are. Well, you know, family, man, it, there is no perfect family. There's no such thing, you know, like, so there's always highs and lows with family, especially when, when, uh, your loved ones, you know, you, you each know how to push each other's buttons and get each other in, uh, under each other's skin and stuff like that. But for the most part, man, I love my family and, and uh, they fully support me and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them, you know, so very grateful for them and they they deserve a lot of this credit you know but yeah man i I love it you know i'll take the highs and the lows I got you, man. I want to get back into the fight just for a second. Uh, tell us about your opponent. I know you've obviously you had to have scouted him, you know, before this opportunity. What did you see out of him, and uh, and, and what can we expect? Uh, you know, uh, I wanted you to get obviously into the game plan. We know you don't want to talk about that, but what can you tell us about your opponent and what you've seen from him on tape so far? So, Yuris Madik, he's uh, from Alaska. He's five and zero. He's undefeated. Uh, of course, that gives him confidence. He hasn't been beaten inside that cage. And, uh, you know, so with those things, you know, that makes a fighter a certain way, you know, so we've kind of, that's been noted and uh, we'll address that on Tuesday night, you know. Yeah, and you know, the other thing too that I want to ask you um, along the lines of the show, uh, I think there's sometimes a misconception with the show. So like a lot of times we think of the show as it's for the, these up and comers, you know, we've seen like the Macy Barbers come out of this uh, show, Sugar Sean O'Malley, uh, Herbert Burns, guys like that. But for you, it's not necessarily you're an up and comer uh, per se. You know, you've been around the block, so to speak. You've uh, had plenty of uh, uh, grappling matches over your career. You have a big grappling background and this is your i believe your ninth professional fight so for somebody that has this experience on their side what's this like for you going to something like this do you feel that this experience and the, and the background that you have it that your martial arts background will help uh propel you in this matchup given that you've you know have so much experience within the sport where some of the guys coming out of the show don't yeah my, my professional record is seven and one um i do have a lot of grappling matches um you know, but grappling is different than just MMA, you know, and MMA is, it's a little bit different. Um, it's a different dog, you know, so being eight fights in, uh, you know, of course my martial arts experience will help me. Um, I feel like my martial arts experience knowledge wise and experience in the years doing it, that, that only kind of translates in regards to how I understand MMA and and uh, combat, so I don't think that that you know is going to make or break a fight because anything can happen. You know, like Mike Tyson said, you know, you could have a plan until you get punched in the face. So anything can happen because it's a fight. But I just feel like my mindset before I fight, what sets my training, what sets my understanding of doing it, is just from. A lot of the experience and knowledge that I've acquired over the many years of training is just the way I perceive combat, if that makes any sense. 
No, no, man, I definitely got you there. I'm going to pick it up what you're putting down there. And then, uh, obviously, just one last thing then for you here. Uh, we're all going to tune in on Tuesday, August 4th, and we're going to watch you take on Uras Menek. What is, what is your prediction? What is Mikey Gonzalez's prediction for this fight? What, 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 how do you see this going down? I predict Mikey Rolls is going to do what Mikey Rolls does best. And uh, when that happens, it's never a good night for the other guy. So... That's what I predict, man. You know, I'm not going to say much, you know, but but I definitely am going to say that uh, I will come ready to shine under those lights, you know. All right, man. Well, best of luck to you, and uh, hopefully we'll be talking to you in a couple weeks when you're a uh, UFC, uh, with the UFC contract uh, that you've just signed. So best, best of luck to you, man. Really appreciate the time. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate you.